Hello guys, TavHD here and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at my main PC. Now this isn't a machine that has had a focus on the channel pretty much ever. I've mentioned it in a few videos but it's never actually had a dedicated video to it. I built this machine in late 2019. It's got a Ryzen 5 3600, an RX 580 and it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And you can probably tell it is liquid cooled. It has a 240 millimeter AIO. It's a Corsair one of some kind. I don't even remember the name. It's been that long, but I'll put it up on screen. And today we are gonna be saying goodbye to the liquid cooling. And there are a few reasons for that. First off, this is now a three and a bit year old cooler. I'm concerned that it might start leaking at some point. I don't really want wetness inside my machine. So that is reason number one. Reason number two, a Ryzen 5 3600 really does not need to be liquid cooled. The only reason I did it is because I thought it would be cool. I'd never used a liquid cooler before and this would have been a good opportunity to do so and I think it looks cool. So that's why I did it. So reason two is that it's not necessary with this sort of machine. And reason three, I'm going to be moving this machine into a different case. And um, that case isn't really suitable for liquid coolers. So yeah, it won't really fit. And the only way I could make it fit is in sacrificing the hard drive bays. And the only reason I want to move cases is to have more hard drive bays. That would defeat the whole purpose. So those are three reasons right there. It's old. This CPU doesn't really need it and it won't be compatible with my case. And I suppose a sort of fourth reason which kind of involves all of those is just the complexity of it. Of course, there's liquid in it, it's got RGB, it's connected to loads of different headers, and it's just more hassle than it's worth for me. I don't even have the lighting turned on on it, and I have the side panel facing a wall, so I can't see the inside anyway. So all of that just means that this isn't really necessary. And I have bought a new air cooler. We won't be installing that today, but I have bought it. It just has one cable on it to plug into a fan header to power the fan and that is it because this of course has two fans and power for the pump so that's three things. Then a fourth is I think a USB so I can control the RGB and stuff. So yeah it's just a lot going on and it's not really necessary. So yeah today we will be removing the whole liquid cooling stuff from this machine and it should just make it a lot more simple so I should probably just shut up and get on with this so I'm going to take the side panel off I've only got one screw in here at the moment now this is the first time I've opened up this machine in probably two and a bit years and I haven't cleaned it at all in that time so it is immensely dusty in there yeah this is the first time I've looked without the panel on. That <laughs> isn't great. The side panel's covered in dust. Don't know if you can see that, but it has like actual thickness to it, which is nice, I guess. So let's get a closer up angle of just how pleasant it really is in there. First off, just look at the top. I have wiped the case quite regularly. Probably about two weeks ago was the last time. I am in a very dusty room, so that doesn't help, but the inside is definitely my own doing. Look at that, that's like a proper carpet of dust. Nice. To be fair, it's not as bad as I thought it would be after pretty much three years of daily use, but still, it's not great, and there's dust on the pipes for the cooler, there's dust on absolutely everything. I do think this is quite a nice looking machine, but the dust does let it down. You can see up there as well if it'll focus. Yeah, everything's kind of just gone a bit hairy. <laughs> it's not the most pleasant, and I can see some spidery webs in there as well. So yeah, this isn't great, but this isn't a dedicated cleaning video. All we are going to be doing is taking the cooler out of here. Maybe I'll give it a bit of a wipe, but I'll give everything a proper clean once I move it into the new case, which will be in a separate video. But yeah, fans aren't looking too nice either. And even round the back, just the screws as well, if it'll focus. They're just dirty as well. And even on the I.O., it's just 
all a bit grim, but to be fair I couldn't really access the back with where the computer was, and this is all the dust that was just under the computer, so yeah, I'm slightly concerned as to what this power supply has been sucking in. Although you can take the bottom dust filter out, so let's do that now, just to see what that has caught. Yeah, that's dusty. I wouldn't say it's actually awful. Oh, okay, yeah, it has got quite a lot. At least it's been doing its job, I suppose. Okay, because of all the cabling involved with this cooler, we're going to have to take the other side panel off, and instantly loads of dust just flew out, but it's not actually looking that bad. Yeah, there's some flying off the panel, but it doesn't look too awful. The cable management's a bit crap, like I didn't really bother. But again, you couldn't really see it, so yeah. And I think all this is for the cool, right? Like, this is what I'm talking about. There's just so much complexity and added wires, which I just don't really care about and don't deem necessary. And one cool thing I didn't remember is that there is some sound deadening material on this side panel. That's cool to see. I didn't remember that was there. But yeah, let's try and work out what all this is for. So... I'm guessing this is all the stuff. I think this cable goes to the top of the cooler. Yeah, there's two cables that come out of the top of the cooler. They are both here. One of them is SATA for power. So that's now unplugged. That's one cable free that goes to the top of the block. And the other one here is to RGB hub. Cool, I guess. And the rest are for the fans. I'm guessing. So let's unplug them. I don't want them plugged in right now. Just let all that dangle. Don't know what this one goes to. So that one is also connected to the block so that can be unplugged too I guess if it wants to. There we are. So that should now be everything unplugged from the block once I've got this one out too. There we are. And there is a USB cable plugged into the block, but we will turn the machine around for that because I think that's all we need to do at the back end for now. And we should just be able to unplug the USB from there on the side of the block. I'm pretty sure that's just plugged into a USB header at the bottom, but I'll just take that out from there for now. And let's see where that does come in. Okay, so it's down here right at the bottom. Quite awkward the bottom connectors in this case, it's on like quite an awkward angle so I think if I pull the whole connector through, there we are, that's now disconnected. Here it is, it's simply just a USB 2.0 header and on the other end is a micro USB so that is now disconnected and we should just be able to unscrew the block and it should just come away but because it has been on for so long the paste realistically is probably quite crusty and because this is AMD it might just pull the CPU out of the socket so I am gonna have to be careful and of course I need to unscrew this equally so I'm not adding excessive pressure to the CPU because that is never good so let's just unscrew this there we are, they are now both undone, and I should just be able to lift it off, hopefully, and there we are. It didn't get stuck, which is good, and we now have the block off, and there is a fan header plugged into the board up there, so I'll unplug that, and let's just... I'm not really sure what to do with this now. Let me see if I can unplug all the cables and get them through that are coming around the back. Yeah, there we are. And um, for now, let's just let that hang. I don't want to leave it down there for too long. But for now, that should be fine. And if you take a look in there, you can see my CPU up there. Looks to be fine. You can see my paste application. It's kind of gone over the edge a bit, but that is quite a decent coverage. I am quite happy with that. I think that was just the pre-applied paste, so that's probably why it's so decent. And yeah, it's still pretty wet, which is good to see. So it looks like the included Corsair paste is actually pretty decent stuff, so yeah. 
I'm very, very happy with that. The CPU didn't pull out, which is always great. So yeah, very, very happy with that. All right, so I've just like lent it in here for now. That'll be fine. Next step is gonna to be to remove the radiator. I could probably just leave it in here and just let it dangle, but I'd rather just take it out. So we need to take the front panel of the case off. There we are. That is the front panel off. And we can now see the radiator in there and all of its dusty glory. And I probably shouldn't have done that because now there's extra dust flying absolutely everywhere. But we should just be able to unscrew this one, two, three, four screws. Should be pretty straightforward. I will get my screwdriver. And there we are, for the first time in over three years, the cooler is out of the case. And here is all the extra wire, so I can just lift that out. And instantly, this computer's got more simple and just like easier in terms of anything that goes wrong. So yeah, goodbye liquid cooler. All right, so a little bit of time has passed because I had to charge my camera. It decided it wanted to run out of battery, which is fair enough. I should probably order some more batteries at some point, but that is irrelevant. But what I've done is I've cleaned the CPU, so it is now nice and shiny in there, ready for the new cooler once I put that on. And I've also just used a bit of compressed air and wiped over a few things just so it looks a bit more pleasant but that is going to be pretty much it for today's video i think i've got across the point that i was making and i think we've done everything that i needed to do goodbye liquid cooling and yeah goodbye liquid cooling we are now ready to install my air cooler I'm not going to be doing that today and i won't be telling you what cooler i've gone for you'll have to stay tuned for next week's video to see what i've gone for it's nothing exciting but it is going to get the job done. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you agree with my points and the reason why I've done this. If you don't agree, let me know. If you do agree, also let me know. And I will be selling my liquid cooler at some point. Not really sure what it's worth or who would want it. But I've still got the original box and all the mounting accessories. So that should be helpful for someone. So thank you again for watching. And I'll see you in the next one where we will be putting the air cooler on this. And probably in the video after that, we'll be putting all this in my new case. So thank you again, and I will see you then. Goodbye.